Hello, how's it going? I want to talk a little bit about packed arrays firstly, and then I want to talk about structured arrays, which are an absolute game changing feature, which makes low level programming a lot easier. Okay, so packed arrays. It, this is pretty much how your GPU sees memory. If we have object A and then object B, it has individual attributes and those are all packed in a completely linear structure. Now there is some padding here and that comes down to memory alignment because it is not very good for the GPU to have a bunch of VEC3s stuck together. It simply cannot effectively fetch those addresses. It's much easier to have like some fake zeros in there and just grab a VEC4 and take the top three elements of that. But okay, pretend that we have an array like this, which stores a whole bunch of objects, and we want to work with these objects, even as simple as just doubling all the positions. Well, and this is a completely naive way of doing it. We step through the array for any number of elements, some variable, and then every eighth element is the beginning of a new object. Do your thing. Now, this is fine. We can work this out. But for larger programs, it can start to become cluttered and unreadable. So we can improve the readability while still maintaining the same basic data structure by naming some of the parameters. So say, for instance, we know that every eight floats will be stepping over to another object. That means the array has a stride of eight. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing. And then we can recognize that each of these attributes has an offset within that within that chunk. So for instance, we can define these, these variables here. These are the offsets to the various attributes. And we have this and the code becomes a little bit more readable. Here's an example of this in action. If I go to my, my little labor of love, my hobby project, we can define a bunch of these and they're the same value, but this is for readability purposes. So we can go over, have a look at the, I don't know, something like the, yeah, transform system. We look through here, we access elements, and then we can write to, you know, a matrix or something. And this is fine, but I want to present an alternative to, to this because there are two things. First of all, it's okay, but um, it could be more readable. And then secondly, there are cases where we genuinely want heterogeneous data structures. So we want a NumPy array that is capable of handling more than one data type, if you will. And this is where structured data types come in. So I'll just go ahead, make a new file. This is just completely temporary. Just call this test. I'll leave that for now. We'll talk about that in, in a second. All right. So what we can do is we can define our own data type. I'm going to just call this my component. And we'll construct a data type. Now, see here we have um, this sort of list here. So what we do is we put in a list and then in the list we have a name and a data type. So let's say we want an X, Y position. So we'll have X. This will be, now see we have these um, symbols here. And this refers to the endianness of the, the data type. So is it whoop, little endian, large endian? In this case, we want little endian float occupying four bytes. Now, I believe this, if I'm understanding this right, this might actually be, what am I thinking? This might actually be SIMD, like a SIMD block of eight float singles. I don't know. That would be a cool thing to look into. But there we have it as our, our float field called X. We can make a float field called Y, and I'll just put in an integer field called I. So now I can go ahead and construct these things. So I'll say um, A will be a NumPy array, and I'll have two of these. That's 
There we go. So all I needed to do was specify that the data type was my component. So each element of this list should be interpreted in the format we see above. And we can verify this. We can go ahead and print A. Let me go print A, the first thing on that list. And then maybe the first thing on that list, let's get its Y component. There we have it. Okay, so there's the list A that we defined. If we look at thing number zero, that is this element here. And then if we look at the attribute Y of that, it's cool. This is very similar to structs. As a matter of fact, I'm so excited because potentially, I don't want to jump the gun here, but potentially this could be giving us more memory control at a low level. Really good if we want to do like Vulcan Python stuff. Sometimes I get the urge. Okay, we can also look at size and I would expect this to return two because we have two elements. They are structs basically, but there's two of them. Now, there's another, there's another issue here. And that is, what if we want to add custom offsets and things? So for instance, if I were to create a whole array of these and send them to the GPU, I would have a problem because I would need to insert some sort of padding in there implicitly, maybe even Let's say we want to do that, for instance. Okay, so if we go print, yeah, let's go print alignment, tells us one, not quite sure what that means. Let's go, alrighty, let's go fields, print the fields. Okay, so what we've got here is we're printing out the fields, it gives us a dictionary, it says attribute X is a float type, it has an offset of zero into the array, Attribute Y is a float. Again, it has an offset of four bytes into the array. And this is a problem because we would not be getting that implicit padding. We can actually add that in if we go back up here and rejig this, this constructor. So what we can also do is put in a dictionary of basically metadata, it's called. But this is basically all the attributes. So we'll say names will be. So we've got names, and then I'm going to specify the formats. Okay, so far so good. So far the same as before. Now this is where it gets really cool. We can specify the offsets manually. So let's say we want our X to be at the beginning, so an offset of zero. We want the Y to be right next to that. Then we want a bit of padding, so another four bytes of padding, and then the I. So that would be setting I at an offset of 12 bytes. And we can also set what's called the item size to be 16 to ensure that we've got 16 bytes of data in total. So we can go, whoop. Run that again. Okay, and now we see that, yep, we have X at an offset of zero, Y at an offset of four, and then the bytes eight to 12 will be padded off with, who, who knows, who cares, maybe probably zeros, and then I is at an offset of 12. So we can, in Python, align our data structures so that we can handle heterogeneous data types different sorts of data types in the same array, and we can align it correctly so that it goes into the GPU. Now, the next question you're probably asking is, can we compile this code? Because one of the big issues with number is not everything that we can do in regular Python or NumPy, we can compile. So let's have a look at that. We'll just get rid of all this stuff here. Let's say I have another array and I'll be very imaginative and I'll call this okay, fair enough. And I want to add all the X, Y positions. So we'll go ahead, we'll make a function. Oh, 
I'm not sure if I ever said this, but this type hinting that I'm doing here is completely optional. I just like to do it for my own enjoyment. Isn't it interesting how Python started out like completely duck typed, completely like dynamic, and then most of the improvements have been shifting it towards static typing. I think it's cool. I can get behind it. Okay, cool. So that's my function. It's very simple. It just lo looks through each of these components, adds their X and Y positions, stores it in A. Alrighty. So first up, let's run this without compiling. So we'll go um, print. I'll just put this in. I'll say um, cool. So we print out A plus B equals, then we do the work and print out that result. Yep, that's what I would expect. I can verify one plus. It's really hard to read, by the way. Let's let's do this. There we go. It helps a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So one plus seven equals eight. Two plus eight equals ten. Quick math. All right. Awesome. So now the big question is. If I were to compile this, would that throw an error? Uh, whoops. Fingers crossed, hey? And there we go. The code ran. So, again, I mean, how cool is this? Doesn't this improve the readability of everything? We define a custom data type. We can make arrays of, those, of that data type. We can have multiple different formats in the same thing. We can set the alignment manually. The thing compiles. I mean, there's there's just, I'm blown away. There's just so many benefits. Anyway, I just wanted to share that and I will be updating my engine to take that into account. And yeah, hope you enjoyed that little session and I'll see you again soon. Bye.